So we would put it out there, and then we would live up to it. And putting it out there, we said, ain't scared of nobody, because I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I want my freedom. Ain't scared of nobody, because I want my freedom. I want my freedom. All right, I'm going to make like me. Ain't scared of nobody, because I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I want my freedom, ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. I march downtown, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom, I want my freedom, I march downtown, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. Ain't scared of your dogs, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom. I want my freedom, ain't scared of your dogs, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. And if you didn't run from the dogs, then they would say, we're going to put all of you in jail. Jail was a frightening thing, especially for black people and black men. The reason for that is because it was like a death sentence. Most black men that went to jail back in those early days, never made it out alive. So it was a frightening thing. But even though it was a frightening thing, as my dad would say, we took it on the show. And we kept on going. And we added a verse for the jail and said, ain't scared to go to jail, cause I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I want my freedom, ain't scared to go to jail. Cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. Ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom, I want my freedom, ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. Back to one of those days, things were so segregated, even more so than it's today. But we decided that we wouldn't let that turn us around. And we sang this song that illustrates and deals with a lot of those different places. One has to do with the bus. Another has to do with swimming pools and all of those kinds of things. So, Little demonstration. If you miss me from the back of the bus, you can't find me nowhere. Come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be riding up there. All right, let's do that. If you miss me from the back of the bus, and you can't find me nowhere. Come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be riding up there in the front. I'll be riding up there, not the back. I'll be riding up there. Come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be riding up there. Carry a little deep one and say, if you miss me from the back of the bus, you can't find me nowhere. Come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be driving up there. In the front, I'll be driving up there. I'll be driving up there. Come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be driving up there. If you miss me from Jackson State, you can't find me nowhere. Come on up to the old miss. I'll be studying up there. At old miss, I'll be studying up there. I'll be studying up there. Come on up to the old miss. I'll be studying up there. They put this big verse in there, it actually came true. It made it 
come about? And he said, if you miss me from the picket line, you can't find me nowhere. Come on down to the city hall. I'll be serving down there. I'll be serving as there.
and also a brilliant scholar whose book will be coming out later this year. And you all heard what the topic is, so um, it has generated a lot of interest. But without further ado, um, I introduce to you all, and to some and present to others, Dr. Deirdre Cooper Holmes. Good morning, everybody. I know y'all are feeling good after participating in those freedom songs. And so, to go back to the original source of black protest in this country, the lives of uh, the enslaved. So, first let me ask you, I know why we're here, but how many of you have taught courses on slavery or either African American history or studies, just by show of hands? Okay. So not, not in the minority. Okay, so what are some of the, the misconceptions that your students have had when you taught these classes kind of generally? There was absolutely no resistance to There was total no compliance to the system. <laughs> Anybody else? That slavery is the only history black people have. Okay. Slavery is the only, it's a single story, right? It's the only narrative. Who else? Um, I find that a lot of my students are ashamed of the past history of slavery. Like they don't want to talk about it. Um, or they do it sometimes. And it's like seen as more of a bigger picture, like it's all about like domination, and that's something that's new mm -hmm. Anybody else? Just for predominantly white schools, or did I find that my students Absolutely ridiculous 
Um, there's one called Way Down South. And if any of you want to copy the syllabus out, you know, just contact me and I can email that to you. But I remember my students absolutely, you know, finding it hilarious, you know, in, a, in an unsettling way. This film uh, produced in the 1930s called Way Down South. It was co-written by a very, very famous black actor uh, during that time, Clarence Muse, who was kind of a step and fetch it type uh, character actor, but who achieved a lot of fame. And so he brought in one of his buddies, Langston Hughes. You all can see this on YouTube, um, the entire film. And they co-wrote a musical based on uh, a Louisiana slave plantation right, and the relationship between a young white plantation uh, owner who was probably a boy of 12 and his happy sidekick, um, the, kind of the, the patriarch of uh, the slave plantation who was uh, played by Clarence Muse. So it was, a, it was really interesting, right? The kinds of conversations that we had by contextualizing what happened then, but also reading academic works written by historians or film theorists about slavery and about film. So it was a really, a really great course where I was able to really merge uh, my troll. So we would put it out there, and then we would live up to it. And putting it out there, we said, ain't scared of nobody, because I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I want my freedom. Ain't scared of nobody, because I want my freedom. I want my freedom now. All right, let's do it like you mean. Ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I want my freedom. Ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom. I want my freedom now. I march downtown, cause I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I march downtown. Cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. Ain't scared of your dogs, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom, I want my freedom, ain't scared of your dogs, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. And if you didn't run from the dogs, then they would say, we're gonna put all of you in jail. Jail was a frightening thing, especially for black people and black men. Reason for that is because it was like a death sentence. Most black men that went to jail back in those early days never made it out alive. So it was a frightening thing. But even though it was a frightening thing, as my dad would say, we took it on the show and we kept on going. And we added a verse for the jail and said, Ain't scared to go to jail, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom, I want my freedom, ain't scared to go to jail, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. Ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom, I want my freedom, ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom. I want my freedom now. Back during those days, things were so segregated, even more so than it's today. But we decided that we wouldn't let that turn us around. And we sang this song that illustrates and deals with a lot of those different one has to do with the bus. Another has to do with swimming pools and all of those kinds of things. So, little demonstration. If you miss me from the back of the bus, you can't find me nowhere. Come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be riding up there. All right, let's do that. If you miss me from the back of the bus, and you can't find me nowhere, come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be riding up there. In the front, I'll be riding up there. Not the back. I'll be 
um, this why there's another round of applause. So of course, um, this when we talk about the themes that are found within the curriculum for the next three weeks, we are going to start off with uh, slavery. And uh, our opening speaker for today is going to be a friend, big sister, and also a brilliant scholar whose book will be coming out later this year. And you all heard what the topic is, so um, it has generated a lot of interest. But without further ado, um, I introduce to you all, and to some and present to others, Dr. Deirdre Cooper Holmes. our lives today in the 21st century can be traced back to slavery, right? Okay. So I've taught slavery um, since the early 2000s. And I've noticed it does not matter where I have been, whether uh, I've been lecturing to college students or even in lay audiences, people tend to be misinformed about slavery. And I always have to remind students, American slavery is older than American democracy, right? It has been in the United States. It has been in the colonial United States, right? Long before democracy existed. And so we kind of, we start from there. And what I also try to do, because what I've, I've realized, particularly as, you know, the generations change and I'm now teaching millennials, is they like to see themselves kind of like Jeff said, you know, white students want to see themselves in slavery. And I'm like, okay, you, you'll see yourself in slavery because white folk were involved in it, right? But also, how to make the connections to the 21st century and the 19th and the 18th and the 17th century tends to be a challenge, but it doesn't have to be. And so I thought, um, how do I make the class endearing and enduring for students um, without kind of the recitation of dates? and names and, the, and, and, and historiographies, right? How can I have students grapple with the nuances of US slavery, but also recognize their own complicity in remaining ignorant, right? Because I mean, there, there are markers all around us that teach us about slavery. And so um, I was able to create a course this past semester called Slavery and Hollywood. And so what we, do, what we did in the class, and it was a really popular class, it was a writing intensive course, um, and so it was like the capstone class for juniors and seniors at Queens College. And it really grew out of a winter session course at the University of Mississippi when I taught there. But what we did 
we literally went through a litany of slavery-based films. And you would be surprised at how many films have been generated in this country on slavery, well over 100. Right? Since the production of uh, Birth of a Nation in 1915. And so we saw, you know, I, I called it from the sublime to the absolutely ridiculous. Um, there's one called Way Down South. And if any of you want to copy the syllabus out, you know, just contact me and I can email that to you. But I remember my students absolutely, you know, finding it hilarious, you know, in, a, in an unsettling way, this film uh, produced in the 1930s called Way Down South. It was co-written by a very, very famous black actor uh, during that time, Clarence Hughes, who was kind of a step and fetch it type uh, character actor, but who achieved a lot of fame. And so he brought in one of his buddies, Langston Hughes. You all can see this on YouTube, um, the entire film. And they co-wrote a musical based on uh, a Louisiana slave plantation right, and the relationship between a young white plantation uh, owner who was probably a boy of 12 and his happy sidekick, um, the, kind of the, the patriarch of uh, the slave plantation who was uh, played by Clarence Muse. So it was, a, it was really interesting, right, the kinds of conversations that we had by contextualizing what happened then, but also reading academic works written by historians or film theorists about slavery and about film. So it was a really, a really great course where I was able to really merge uh, my